I want to break down all Magnets Media style in CapCut, and I'll explain tips and big project. This video is part one of Magnets Media Playlist. In this video, I'll show you how to create this train scene in CapCut. This tutorial has three steps. Pick up your pen and your notebook. Step one, what files we need to download? A train, three factory image, one vector oil pump, a ground with train road, two workers green screen video, and one smoke video. Then we should make them PNG or separate layers for animation. I use Photoshop, but you can use Canvas or Online Photo Edit, or if you're using mobile, you can use PixArt app. The process is the same. Open your train image in Photoshop. Use the wand tool to select the sky, then press the backspace key on your keyboard to remove it. Do same process for other area too. You can use the eraser tool depending on the area you want to remove. Next, use the polygonal lasso tool to select around the train shape and make it PNG. If you accidentally remove an area that shouldn't be removed, it's okay. Use the lasso tool to select the same shape and line, then go to edit and choose the fill option or press shift F5. You can remove driver by using clone stamp tool or press S key on your keyboard. Then hold Alt key, choose area and draw on driver face. Use lasso tool once again and select a round wagon. And press Ctrl X for cutting layer, then press Ctrl V to paste it into new layer. Move it under train layer. And make it duplicate, select third layer and make it smaller. Sometimes, I use brush to clean up some areas. We need to add some motion blur to layers. Select one of wagon layers, go to filter, choose a blur, and then select motion blur. Set the number to 12 or 15 depending on the train's speed. Be careful not go too high as you may lose details. Repeat this process for second layer too. Now select all layers, right click, export as, press blue export and then select your folder. Import your oil pump image in Photoshop, then use wand tool. Select black area, invert selection, press backspace key on your keyboard. Now it's PNG, then erase extra area like ground and rope. Now it's time to separate top from bottom. Use lasso tool polygonal again. Then press Ctrl X for cutting. Now press Ctrl V to paste top pump layer into new layer. Erase extra areas. Then export layers. Now do same process for other image too. Make them PNG. Remove sky, people or any extra object. Click the link in the description to download this tutorial files to make your own video. Step 2. Import all image into CapCut. Import your sky image to the timeline first, then rotate and scale it to fit your screen. Next, go to modify and turn on the free layer. After that, import the factory PNGs on top of the background and increase the duration because this video is for tutorial. But if your project needs more time, increase the duration as much as you need. Then drag the ground image into the timeline and go to the basic part to scale it. If it doesn't have a very good perspective, uncheck the uniform scale and change the height and width. Changing them will help you to better perspective view. Now let's add train layers. Change the scale and rotation to make sure the ground and train layers are in the right position. Remember to put the wagon layers under the train layer.
Now it's time to add some motion to the train. Go to the effects section, look for nightclub, or use the search bar. Type shake and add the camera shake to the train layer. Set the range to one or two. For speed, set it between 20 and 30. For other layers, use the shake effect. Set the strength to two and speed between 50 or 60. Why you use two type of shake effects? I'm doing this because when you use one effect on all layers, they will shake in the same way. Since we want a little shake, we can't change the numbers a lot. So if you use two types of effects, like camera shake and shake effect, it shakes more randomly. That was a lot of shake words I ever said in my life. Then add a smoke video to the timeline and place it under the train layer. Make it smaller and rotate it 90 degree. Go to the basic section and change the blend mode to screen. Now, our train needs light to see the road better. In the media library, in background, scroll down to find the yellow color. Drag it onto the timeline, rotate it 90 degree and make it bigger. Then, go to the mask section and choose the circle. Make it smaller and move it to the right position. Increase the feather a little bit because it's our original light. Duplicate the light layer and scale it. Then increase the feather. To animate the light, go to the effects section in the nightclub. Add flash 2 on the glow light layer. In settings, set the strength to 10, size to 20, and speed to 40. Now select the train layers and the smoke layer. Move them to the center of the screen. Then select the train layers and the light layers and make them a compound clip. Now we have two layers. A train layer with light and a smoke layer. Why didn't you compound the smoke layer with the train layers? Because when you do that, the blend mode will be reset and the black screen will appear again. So go two seconds further. Select the train layer in the basic section. Make a keyframe for position. Don't move anything. Then select the smoke layer and make a keyframe too. Go to the beginning of the timeline, then select both layers and move them out of the shot. Now we have animation for the train. We should give a little space in front of the train, so go to the second keyframes, and if you want to be sure, check if it's blue. Select both layers again, and move them a little to the left. Why should I do that? Because when the right side is empty, it means the character came from the left side and wants to go to the right side. It's a rule of cinema to make action and tell a story. To animate the train going out of the shot, go to the end of the timeline and make another keyframe at the right position for both layers. Move them out of the shot. This time, it should go to the right side. Now, right-click on the train layers, show keyframe, and make the keyframe smoother by selecting Auto Curve. Do the same process for the both layers too. It should move like this. Now we should add our oil pump. Import both layers into a timeline and make them smaller. Put the top part in the right position. It should move like this. First, make two keyframes for rotation, at the beginning and end of the layer. The keyframe should have zero rotation. For the middle of the animation, rotate it. And we get something like this. Duplicate both layers and put them on the right side of the timeline because we'll need them for later. Then, make it a compound clip. Change the scale because it's near the camera and it should be bigger. Move it out of the shot and make a keyframe. Then, for the second keyframe, move it to the left side, out of the shot. Because it's near the camera, it should pass very fast. So, reduce the distance between keyframes to make the animation faster. Then put our second pump at the center of the shot and change the keyframe to get a different movement. Next, make it a compound clip and move it under the train and smoke layer. Make it smaller because it should be far from the camera.
and make a keyframe for position so it moves out of the shot. It should move from the right side to the left. Remember, it should move at the same speed as the ground animation. Every time, check if the ground and other objects have the same speed or not. If they don't have the same speed, you can increase or decrease the distance between the keyframes. Duplicate the oil pump layer and mirror it, because we don't want to see repeated objects in our shot. Duplicate them again to get more of them in the shot. You can make new keyframes for position too. Do the same process for them to get something like this. Now we should add our workers. Import one of them into the timeline, and in the crop section, choose your worker. Go to the cutout part and turn on Chroma Key. Then use the color picker to select the green color and increase the strength to remove the green color. Now, change the scale because it's near the camera, so it should be bigger. Do the same process for passing in front of the camera. Move it out of the shot and make a keyframe. Then, for the second keyframe, move it to the left side, out of the shot, and duplicate the worker layer. Move it under the train layer and make it smaller, because it should be farther from the camera. Because it's so far from the camera, it should move a little slower. So in this case, the distance between the keyframes should be more. If you want to add more workers, you can duplicate the layer or replace the second worker footage because it has a different angle. If the end of the shot is empty of objects, duplicate some oil pumps and workers and move them to the end of the timeline. Now it's time for color grading. Select the sky layer and decrease the opacity. We want to change the shot from day to night. Decrease the opacity a little bit for the other factory layers too. In adjustment, decrease brightness and highlights to get a more nighttime scene. Do the same process for the other factory layers too. For the ground layer, Make it a little warmer by changing the temperature and decrease the saturation to get dry ground. Add some particles, clarity, and a little sharpness. You can change other settings too. It depends on your project. If you want a dry sense, it shouldn't be colorful. For workers, we shouldn't see their faces. So, select the layer, and in adjustment, use the curve to decrease Luma to make them black. Do the same process for the other workers too. Now it's time to add some noise and texture footage. Put some of them between layers and change the blend mode to screen. Remember, if your project is about history, use this footage. If it's not, don't use them. But they make videos cooler. I know they are cool, but sometimes using cool effects will damage your project. And for the final touch, change the temperature, hue, and saturation to make the train warmer. Change the contrast and highlights to make the train pop out of the shot. Add some filters. Add candy cane. In the retro part, you can use cap cut effect too. You can use retro effects to add some noise to the shot. Use VHS3. For the smoke, increase the temperature. Or if you want to add stop motion to the smoke layer, Add Doodle Diary. Decrease filters, texture, and stickers. At the end, add an adjustment on top of all layers. Scroll down and increase the vignette to 20 to make a shadow around the corner. And done. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll dive into another scene from Magnates Media. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. As always, stay creative. <laughs> True.